My name is uh, Cheryl Gosa. I teach sociology here at Bishop's University. I'm very involved in my uh, local community here, particularly among the Anglophone community and all Anglophone communities across the province. My current research project deals with uh, integrating immigrants to Quebec society through uh, the community organizations of the uh, Anglophone community and the social movements I'm involved in is protecting and lobbying for the rights of Anglophone communities. I'm on the board of Townshippers Association as well as Quebec Community Groups Network. My name is Alana Katrina Fernandes and I was a co-founder of the Tierra del Fuego Community Resource Centre and the more recent project L'Espace Sans Nom. I work for an organic CSA farm. I have two young children who I am raising well with my partner and we have a collective uh, preschool project that we are starting together. What social movements or activities have you personally been involved with? I was co-founder of a community project based in Lennoxville called the Tierra del Fuego, which is a kind of community resource center and um, common house. So um, we were living... we. Uh, me and a couple other people, we re decided to rent a house in common, live together, eat together, and um, kind of organize activities for the community, offer uh, services such as a garden, um, community uh, kitchen, library space, um, and slowly over the years it became uh, it's still in existence um, and it has become a kind of source uh, for to find community and to um, learn uh, different things and have um, positive social experiences and whatnot. Um, I'm also uh, currently involved in a project called Les Bassano, which is, uh, we consider as a kind of sister project to the Tierra del Fuego because there's lots of uh, common values and approaches. Uh, the difference is that the Les Bassano is in, is in a public venue, whereas the Tierra is in a private living set setting. And uh, which was intentional to um, kind of neutralize the space and, and make it feel a bit more accessible to just any stranger off of the street. And it is also more bilingual. The Tierra del Fuego was started by primarily Anglophone people and uh, the Les Basano is very much a good example of the fusion uh, between uh, young uh, Social movement, act, uh, young social movement activists who are English speaking and Frank and French speaking. When did Tierra um, del Fuego start? In two thousand and eight, and Les in two thousand thirteen. Mm. Yeah. I'm actually participating in a project in, with other families um, as a. a of preschool, forming a kind of preschool together, uh, which is intentionally small scale and based on principles of uh, practical skills, uh, creativity, music, hands-on, uh, nature activities and whatnot. And that is uh, very exciting and uh, we're making, building very good connections uh, with other families and other children. And that project is actually based out of a larger project, which I am also implicated in presently, called uh, L'Espace Sans Nom, uh, which is a play on words of um, the space with a hundred names or no names. It works better in French. <laughs> um, which is a kind of, uh, it's a vegan restaurant, 
but also a social space uh, where um, everything is volunteer run and offered by donation and so uh, the project has been started with the spirit of the economy of generosity if we're calling it um, as a kind of alternative to um, paid exchange, monetary exchange um, to, in, to have access to healthy food and uh, recreational activities. The kind of activities that are offered at the space uh, include um, a wide variety of things uh, such as um, film screenings, uh, yoga and meditation, um, uh, workshops on like, food transformation, uh, arts, uh, art cafe, um, things of that nature. So, it, and it includes its housing also our preschool, as well. So it's very family friendly, uh, intergenerational. You've been talking about being able to bridge um, English and French, and how now you think that you're part of this global movement. So does in your global perspective then, does language and culture even fit in? Um, do you still think in terms of French, English, or is there more of a, a melding of that, mm -hmm. you think? Mm. Over the time of my um, reintegration into Quebec, since I moved here for school, um, I have learned French, I'm, I've become bilingual, and that has really enriched my sense of um, affiliation with uh, with the community and with other people. Like my actions and um, experiences are tend to be um, in both scenes: um, anglophone links, francophone links, and franglais links. <laughs> <laughs> in Quebec, we tend to have. Um, English, a, a, a general tendency toward from for English people to be learning French language in order to get by, which is basically where I started from. Um, but from my francophone friends and colleagues, I do see an interest and a similar kind of enrichment in learning English and in knowing about English culture as well, which is not something I don't feel is uh, is um, spoken about or is celebrated as much, like the francophone aspect of um, accepting, you know, English culture and finding a kind of of a kind of. Val validation in that and a kind of um, richness in that. So um, to say that it definitely goes both ways even though it's not a, something that tends to be um, understood or recognized at, or e supported or you know um, um, encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. And that we can have a place, you know, even that I'm learning that I can, you know, speak English when I need to speak English. Yeah. And that that person who is maybe a French speaker can receive it and that they can respond in English if they want or can or in French if they want or can and vice versa. And there can be place for both. And there can be, um, yeah, a mutual sharing and like co-creation mm -hmm. of kind of franglais. Uh. <laughs> Definitely we all live on the same planet, live in the same community, live in the same place and issues around the environment, climate, family, mm. uh, food. Mm. Uh, we all have those issues in common, whatever mm. language we speak, whatever culture 
uh, we're from whatever country of origin that, that we're from. So the idea that we can cross these bridges mm -hmm. and come to common ground on, on these issues that we need to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to work together on because mm -hmm. it, it does mean uh, uh, the dailiness of our lives mm -hmm. and, and the future, the future mm -hmm. for, for our lives as well. Mm -hmm. What language issues pose challenges or offers strengths? There are barriers because there's difference, right? And so I think we have to be very conscious about being courageous to try, you know, to mm -hmm. break those barriers. Mm -hmm. Or um, for the sake of just wanting to get to know each other and just wanting to connect. And even further, actually working on con something concrete together and being effective together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it does come from a base, uh, for me anyway, it did come from a base of being courageous um, and of speaking to a need and responding to that need. Because hmm. hmm. it's easy, like, I think in the case of, say, my parents, for example, like, there was a kind of exclusion that was set in place and barriers that were accepted. Um, and I guess I was not into, I'm not, I was not interested in just letting, and just keeping myself um, excluded. Hmm. So you're, you're talking about the different um, differences in, in generations hmm. then, perhaps, perhaps as well. Then mm -hmm. your generation is becoming mm -hmm. much more comfortable in, mm -hmm. in bridging those barriers of language, mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. and to be active in the community. Right? Together. Also, together. Mm -hmm. Whereas in your parents' generation, mm -hmm. as you were saying, it's English and French and we have to live here and stay here mm -hmm. and build community in our own little corner. Mm -hmm. And then as well, there's the historical aspect to the differences in the way that sort of Anglophones do their activism and, and Francophones do their activism mm -hmm. because politically it, it's, it was so very different and if you go back to before the 1960s, before the Quiet Revolution, when the English dominated right? and then how all of that changed and then mm -hmm. the French had to become activists um, because it, it was their future, it mm -hmm. was about building a society for, the, for themselves. Mm -hmm. So sort of all of that obviously plays in, in today and where activism is going and mm -hmm. how you say the ability to work together on, mm -hmm. on common ground, mm -hmm. definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. Where do immigrants coming into Quebec, where do they fit in, in your, your activism? Well, I can speak from my two the, my two primary examples from the projects that I, I was involved in. One, we named the Tierra del Fuego, Tierra del Fuego, with the intention mm -hmm. of, um, of uh, going beyond just the French and English dynamic, um, a binary kind of dynamic. Uh, it's a kind of metaphor for inclusion and for cultural diversity. So that was the goal, you know. Um, in the real action, um, it, I think it did take some time to build those links, but now, I mean, uh, the Tierra del Fuego is housing uh, Spanish speakers, as well as English speakers, as well as French speakers, as well as international people who are coming from other other uh, languages and other cultures. So it is a principle that has um, come to fruition over time. Uh, and in terms of my experiences with the other project, um, the concept of the economy of generosity uh, is a principle that um, just aims for the the space to be accessible to people regardless of how much money they make and um, 
yeah, regardless of any kind of obligation they may feel to um, to to contribute monetarily or not. Mm -hmm. And so it's also encouraging uh, other modes of methods of exchange. I would hope that people from other cultures would feel comfortable to come in and um, share what they have to offer, um, share their, their their skills, um, their life experiences, and have a place, an outlet for that. The place is open at many different ou different hours. There's a diverse array of activities um, that I think can touch touch on the interests of people from all walks of life. And being part of a very tiny minority community here in the townships in the, uh, the Lennoxville region then. Um, do you see yourself as central to that kind of community where the Townshippers Association, the Lennoxville District Women's Center, the Youth Center, mm -hmm. maybe some of the churches mm -hmm. um, whose congregation is primarily English, but they're <coughs> opening up. I'm thinking of the Hope Church that receives a lot of refugees um, who speak a first language, but then also a little bit of English. Um, they're being helped to integrate into uh, the community. So do you see yourself as, as part of, of that community? So in other words, you're not just activists working there, you're sort of activists that um, are, are central or, or working with that minority community being Anglophone, which is more and more inclusive to Francophone neighbors, and then mm -hmm. as well becoming more and more inclusive, creating, like you say, a multicultural common space mm -hmm. for um, all kinds of, of mm -hmm. Quebecers. Mm -hmm. And I want to say for people of all abilities as well, mm -hmm. like to mm -hmm. speak of, um, um, yeah, people who may have certain needs or certain um, special ways of of learning or of acting. Yes, absolutely. Um, I see us as being allies. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Um, us as, you know, just trying something, opening our doors and... Mm -hmm. mm. Through your social activism, you've been able mm -hmm. to build these bridges mm -hmm. across language and, mm -hmm. and culture, and difference, all kinds of differences. Mm -hmm. Knowing you mm -hmm. as a former student, mm -hmm. I can really see that now mm -hmm. that you put the personal and the political together because I remember you as an independent young woman mm -hmm. in um, Tierra del Fuego and then now mm -hmm. what you're talking about in terms of your personal life and your children mm -hmm. and then where you're working now mm -hmm. I can really see the uh, the evolution of, mm -hmm. your, of your, your social activism mm -hmm. and now the, the why so mm -hmm. it, it to for me anyway mm -hmm. it totally fits mm -hmm. and that's thank you thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. that's wonderful The young person came to you this afternoon and said, I want to become a social activist in the community. What <laughs> advice would you have for them? I would say, take your time, calm yourself. <laughs> it can be exciting and stimulating, especially when you're young and just getting into things and opening up your senses and your mind to um, all, the, all the possibilities and the potential and also the, criti the, the critical aspects, you know, like the problems and the, and the, the turmoils that exist in the world. And so, um, yeah, I would say really like, whew. <laughs> Just, yeah, take your time with it. Um, uh, keep grounded. Take care of yourself mm -hmm. so that we can build relationships that are respectful and that are, 
yeah, really effective. Mm. 